Okay, welcome to another edition of Lion News. Lion News can be found at lionnews00.blogspot.com. My name is Terry Dean Nemers, and it's November 7th, 2012. And what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about my favorite thug cop up in Duluth, uh, Richard the Thug Jopai. He uh, beat up Anthony John Jackson on September 21st, 2012 at the Duluth Detoxification Center was all on video and uh, something you didn't read in the newspaper or see on TV was that um, Joe Bai had destroyed the video or didn't put it in the, in the uh, Duluth Police Department property evidence room. Uh, yeah, this is something I just found out uh, through an information request. I actually I take that back. I found it out because I put up a video saying that they were refusing to give me, the Duluth Police Department were refusing to give me uh, uh, public data uh, in regard to this case. That's how I found out about it. After I put up the video, then they sent me the information. Well, uh, I guess I'm not the only one who's been exposing this uh, little uh, cover-up here, because... Uh, Lori Hall, she happens to be the director of the Duluth Detoxification Center. She's the one who actually filed the original complaint because uh, obviously uh, they were pretty upset. Well, uh, this Rebecca Wells, she witnessed the beating and was told that she was going to be placed under arrest if she, uh, you know, if she tried to stop uh, uh, her thug cop here from uh, beating this guy. And of course we have our uh, officer... Amber Peterson, who happens to be Thuggo's uh, partner, who, sa who stands by and watches. You watch the video. She stands in the far corner, does absolutely nothing. Doesn't do anything to stop him from beating this guy, nor does she place him under arrest because she witnessed a crime. But she didn't arrest him. No surprise there, is it? Well, so that's no surprise that the video, which Joe Pye had in the report that he picked up at the detoxification center isn't in the police property room. Uh, well, yes, again, like I said, this is what I found out after I put in, put up my video saying that they were withholding ever, or holding public data from me. All right? Now, this, uh, this little scam they have going up here in Duluth is uh, they're going to try and Try and get this thing over and done with real quick. Tomorrow is supposedly Joe Pye's um, first appearance. Now he's been charged with two misdemeanors. I mean, give me a break. Beat this guy. Five, hit this guy five times and throw him over backwards. Oh, and by the way, I learned that he has osteoporosis. That's why he's in the wheelchair. So the last thing he needs is some guy slamming him backwards. You know, on the, on the hard floor. You know, I'm sure he didn't need the five punches in the face either. But, uh, I mean, especially if you have osteoporosis, the last thing you need is someone body slamming you onto the floor. So anyhow, uh, this Sean Reed is going to try to uh, cover this thing up by undercharging this guy. Not uh, mentioning the fact that the video is missing. That, you know, he engaged in misconduct of a public official, which is, of course, a gross misdemeanor. Which, you know, after I got my... Uh, public information that I requested, I found out that in the Code of Conduct, it specifically states that if you inflict physical harm on another person, you will be charged with a gross misdemeanor. Which one? Ah, misconduct of a public official. Minnesota Statute 609.43. Yes, it's right in their own Code of Conduct. Surprise, surprise. You didn't hear about that in the news or the newspapers, did you? Boy, I wonder if the newspapers or the televisions asked for the same kind of information I did. I bet you they did, but they're uh, involved in this cover-up just as much as everyone else. See? And their little police reports, you know, they have, in there it says that they've, 
they watched the videos, they conferred with the city attorney's office, they got their, uh, their um, use of force instructors all to watch the video, and they've come to the conclusion all he needed was a fifth degree assault being pressed against uh, Officer Jopai. Well, then they added, you know, disorderly conduct. So it's two misdemeanors, all right? But they're saying, well, you know, he didn't, he didn't suffer any damage that would justify anything more than fifth degree assault. Well, I guess obviously I must have read a different report than what they did. Because in the report it says that after the beating, Officer Peterson noticed she had blood all over her hands. Why? Because there's this gash, a laceration, okay, they say laceration in the report, that's opened up. They find out that it was actually an old laceration that was medically glued. Now, I remember reading that in the newspaper, but required stitches to close it. Well, obviously, the glue wouldn't hold it anymore, and it's probably so um, traumatized that they need it, or bigger, that they had to stitch it. Because usually they glue the smaller ones, and then once it gets to be too big, well, then they got to do the stitches. So obviously it was bigger than what it was before. All right. So now we have a substantial injury. Boy, now, I'm not the brightest guy in the world, but it seems to me felony assault in the third degree is whoever assaults another inflicts substantial bodily harm may be sentenced to imprisonment for not more than five years or to payment of a fine of not more than $10,000 or both. Well, you know, they're going to... First of all, the Sean Reed is going to go, Oh, Mr. Nevers, you don't know what you're talking about with this misconduct of a public official. I mean... There wasn't substantial damage or anything like that. Well, the only detail is, is with misconduct of a public official, it says, let's see here, under pretense or color of official authority, intentionally or unlawfully injures another in the other's person, property, or rights. See, it doesn't say that it has to be a substantial amount of injury, it just has to be an injury. So we've already crossed that threshold with the um, with the the beating, five punches, and opening up this wound. All right. So we're we're already at the gross misdemeanor level. All right. And in case uh, they start objecting even more, I'm going to bring up another piece of evidence. This little piece of evidence is a, a custodial officer out of Blue Earth called Robert Gary Bundy. This uh, officer decided to shove, yes, only shove a prisoner, and he was charged with a gross misdemeanor. Which one? Yes. Minnesota Statute 609.43. Misconduct of a public officer or employee. E. All right, and I called down to to um, it, it, he was a Blue Earth County officer. All right, but they had to transfer the case to Brown County to avoid a conflict of interest. Something Pope County knows nothing about. Anyhow, I called the Brown County Attorney's Office, and I put them uh, put this question to them. I said. If Robert Gary Bundy had shoved this individual and the individual who he had pushed had a laceration on his chest and it was stabilized and they had this by the push and had opened up the wound, would that justify additional charges? Okay, now... The thing is, they weren't very happy about answering my questions to start with. But once I asked that question, they got really snotty. All right? Because now they knew I was hinting at um, felony charges. And this, this case has already been settled a while ago. All right? 
he did a plea bargain. You're probably seeing my uh, the information as I'm talking to you right now. Uh, so you see, it was settled back. I think it was like 2010. But anyhow, uh, they got really snotty about the fact that I was asking if that would justify additional charges, and they actually brought up the fact. So you're, they said, Mr. Numbers, are you talking about third degree felony? I said, well, it's a laceration, they've opened it up. So I took from their reaction, which of course they weren't going to give me an answer, specific answer, but I could tell by their reaction that I had touched a nerve. And they began to ask me if I was the actual person who was injured, if I was an attorney, you know, somehow involved in the case. They got real, real nervous. So my thinking is that by Jopai kicking the crap out of this guy, hitting him five times in the face and dropping him backwards, opens up this stabilized wound, that happens to be felony assault. See, so my thinking is they're hoping to run this guy in, he's going to plead guilty tomorrow, and uh, they can say, oh, justice has been served. Well, I don't think so, because you people have been involved in the cover-up since day one. See? Obviously, they knew that Joe Pye threw away the DVD a long time ago. Obviously, that's standard operating procedure up in Duluth, you know, at the Duluth Police Department. You know, how can you have a supervisor who uh, reads a report saying there's evidence in the uh, police evidence room and it's not in the police evidence room unless they know that it's not in the police evidence room? All right? See? So... This is a little scam they're trying to trying to pass on people. That these misdemeanor charges are nothing but a joke. At minimum, he should be charged with gross misdemeanor charges, misconduct of a public official, and I think, this is my opinion, should be felony charges for causing substantial bodily harm because of the laceration which needed stitches. Alrighty, folks, I will be providing more information about this case because I actually have recorded conversations with their uh, uh, public information officer. I think they figured out after a while that I was recording all the conversations and uh, they stopped calling me. All right, so that's uh, the little update for today. We'll see what happens tomorrow, see if uh, Joe Pye runs in there and pleads pleads guilty to uh, one of the misdemeanors and one gets dropped, or maybe they'll have to postpone it and have to have an amended complaint. Either way, the cat's out of the bag, your little scam has been exposed, so I don't think that uh, too many people are going to be trusting the Duluth Police Department or the uh, city attorney's office or the Sean Reed special prosecutor anymore. Alrighty, thank you for your time.